months. Uh, and they were literally afraid to open their mail uh, because of the, uh, the venom and vituperation that they had inadvertently uh, inspired. Well, um, I mean, the night is young, but so the book has been out for uh, half a year and uh, nothing terrible has happened. Uh, none of the dire professional consequences has uh, taken place. I haven't been uh, ex exiled from uh, the uh, city of Cambridge. Um, but what I wanted to talk about are two uh, of these hot buttons that have uh, aroused the gr strongest response in the 80-odd reviews that the blank slate ha has received. I'll just put that list up for a, 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 a few seconds and see if you can guess which two topics. I would estimate that probably two of these topics inspired probably 90% of the reaction in uh, the various reviews and radio interviews. It's not violence and war, it's not race, it's not uh, gender, it's not Marxism, it's not Nazism. They are the arts and parenting. So uh, let me tell you what uh, aroused such uh, irate responses, and uh, I'll let you decide if, whether they, the uh, claims are really that outrageous. Well, let me start with the arts. Um, I note that among the long list of human universals that I presented uh, a few slides ago um, are art. There is no society ever discovered in the remotest corner of the world that has not had something that we uh, would consider the uh, arts. Uh, visual arts, decoration of surfaces and bodies appears to be a human universal, telling of stories, music, dance, poetry found in all cultures, and many of the uh, motifs and themes uh, are, uh, that um, give us pleasure in the arts can be found in all uh, human societies. Uh, a preference for, for uh, symmetrical forms, the use of repetition and variation, even things as specific as the fact that in poetry all over the world you have lines that are very close to three seconds long separated by pauses. Now, um, on the other hand, in the second half of the 20th century, the arts are frequently said to be in decline. And I have a collection, probably 10 or 15 headlines, from uh, highbrow magazines deploring the fact that the arts are in decline uh, in, in uh, our time. I'll give you a couple of representative quotes. We can assert with some confidence that our own period is one of decline, that the standards of culture are lower than they were 50 years ago, and that the evidences of this decline are visible in every department of human activity. That's a quote from T.S. Eliot, a little more than 50 years ago. And a more recent one, uh, the possibility of sustaining high culture in our time is becoming increasingly problematical. Serious bookstores are losing their franchise. Nonprofit theaters are surviving primarily by commercializing their repertory. Symphony orchestras are diluting their programs. Public television is increasing its dependence on reruns of, of British sitcoms. Classical radio stations are dwindling. Museums are resorting to blockbuster shows. Dance is dying. That's from uh, Robert Brewstein, the, uh, the famous drama critic and, and uh, director in The New Republic about five years ago. Well, in fact, uh, the arts are not in decline. It's put, I don't think this would come as a surprise to anyone in this room. But by any standard, uh, they have never been flourishing to a greater extent. There are, uh, of course, entirely new art forms and new media, many of which you've uh, heard over these few days. Uh, by any uh, economic standard, the demand for uh, art of all forms is uh, skyrocketing, as you can tell from the price of opera tickets, by the number of books sold, uh, by the number of books published, the number of uh, musical titles released, the number of new uh, albums, and so on. The only grain of truth to this uh, complaint that the arts are in decline come from three uh, spheres. One of them is in elite art since the 1930s, say the kinds of works performed by major symphony orchestras, where most of the repertory uh, is before 1930, uh, or the works shown in uh, major galleries and uh, prestigious museums. Um, in literary criticism and analysis, probably 40 or 50 years ago, literary critics were a uh, kind of cultural hero. Now they're kind of a national joke. And in the humanities and arts programs in the universities, which by many measures indeed are in decline, uh, students are staying away in droves, universities are disinvesting in the arts and humanities. Uh, well, here's a, a, a diagnosis. Uh, they didn't ask me, but by their own admission, they need all the help that they, they can get. And I would like to suggest that it's not a coincidence that this supposed uh, decline in the elite arts and criticism 
occurred in the same point in history in which there was a widespread denial of human nature. Uh, a famous quotation can be found, if you look on the web, you can find it in uh, literally uh, scores of uh, English course syllabuses. Uh, in or about December 1910, human nature changed. Uh, a uh, paraphrase of a quote by Virginia Woolf, and there's a, uh, some debate as to what she actually meant by that, but it's very clear looking at these syllabuses uh, that the, um, it's used now as a way of saying that all of the forms of appreciation of art that were in place for centuries or millennia uh, in the 20th century were discarded. That beauty and pleasure in art, probably a human universal, were, began to be considered saccharine or kitsch or commercial. Uh, Barnett Newman had a famous quote that the impulse of modern art is the desire to destroy beauty, which was considered bourgeois or tacky. Uh, here's just uh, one example. I mean, this is a uh, perhaps a representative example of uh, visual depiction of the female form in the 15th century. Here is a uh, representative example of the depiction of the female form in the uh, 20th century. Uh, and as you can see, there, something has changed in the way the elite arts uh, appeal to the senses. Indeed, in, in uh, movements of modernism and postmodernism, uh, there was visual art without beauty, literature without narrative and plot, poetry without meter and rhyme, architecture and planning without ornament, human scale, green space, natural light, music without melody and rhythm, and criticism without clarity, attention to aesthetics, and insight into the human condition. Um, let me just give you an example to back up that last statement. But here, they're one of the most famous literary uh, English scholars of our time is the uh, Berkeley professor Judith Butler. Uh, and uh, here is a, an example of uh, one of her uh, analyses. The move from a structuralist account in which capital is understood to structure social relations in relatively homologous ways to a view of hegemony in which power relations are subject to repetition, convergence, and rearticulation brought the question of temporality into the thinking of structure and marked a shift from a form of Althusserian theory that takes structural totalities as theoretical objects. Well, you get the idea. Uh, by the way, this is one sentence. Uh, you, can actually, you can actually parse it. <laughs> 